Last year, I hoped that 2017 would be better than 2016. What the hell, people? Okay, for as screwed up as everything else was this year, video games, for the second year in a row, overall, were pretty damn good. And yet again, this video is honouring the games that stood head and shoulders above the rest, and also ones that stood so low, they deserve to get one last kicking. That's right, it's the third annual Keikis. In previous years, we've given out various awards to certain titles, and those same categories return this year, with a slight twist. And those categories are... First up, we always start with the most disappointing of the year award. Usually, this is given to a singular game, but this year, it's going to be a little different, as explained shortly. Secondly, we have honourable mentions. Usually, just one game gets a special nod here, something absolutely worth your time, but just shy of getting top honours. This year, two titles are getting nods, and they're a phenomenal show of how good this year has been for gaming. Third, we have Game of the Year Runner-Up. There's only one game better than this from this year's crop, but uh, hot damn, this year's pick is a solid contender for every other end of year show out there. And finally, last but not least, we have the Game of the Year. I'm pretty sure that the title itself is pretty self-explanatory, and this year it was probably the hardest award to give out. As always, feel free to disagree. These are, you know, my personal picks. So if you don't agree with any of them, we have a comment section down there. Alternatively, you can yell at me on Twitter, because the handle's going to be right there. And we can also yell at me on Facebook, right here. So, you know, just tell me I'm wrong or something. Anyway, enough shilling of the social medias. Uh, let's get on with the show. Most disappointing thing of the year, 2017. Capcom USA for, among many things, the continual mishandling of Street Fighter V, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and Dead Rising 4, among others. As always, it's best to get the nasty category out of the way first, and this year, I have beef. I know Street Fighter V came out last year, and the bulk of this is aimed squarely at Capcom USA's total ineptitude with that particular title but it missed out narrowly to Pokemon Go in 2016, and frankly, Season 2 and all it bought only made things worse. The new characters out of this year are totally laughable, meaningful single player content is still lacking, and the new moves added in the April update are... Just, just look at this. This is just the tip of the iceberg, hiding the massive elephant in the room. Make no mistake, this game is a soulless husk for Capcom USA's desire to hurl into esports with their Capcom Pro Tour. Customer satisfaction be damned in favour of corporatism that has done a terrific job shitting all over what the FGC represents. Do you think I'm being dramatic? Let me paint you a picture with this alone. A reskinned premium DLC costume with a slapped on corporate brand in a piss poor attempt to cross market. And let's not get started on the PR hell that is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, aka the return of the DARE campaign. That got so bad that I refused to buy it. And as a huge fighting game fan, that's a heartbreaker. On the Dead Rising forefront, well, it's the same story of poor PR and pushing nonsense over fixing bad games. And when they attempt to fix them, Capcom are still screwing up. Street Fighter V Arcade Edition was announced recently, and guess what? They're limiting the way you can earn the in-game fight money, mitigating down almost 1.1 million in fight money to just over 200,000 in an attempt to force you to break out the credit card and spend some cold hard gash on a troubled game. At least we've got a saviour on the horizon for fighting games, and I for one welcome our anime overlords. That said, this is just Capcom USA. Meanwhile, in Japan, honorable mention number one.
Resident Evil 7, and the rest of Capcom Japan. Talk about a Jekyll and Hyde situation. While Capcom USA continued to blunder through the year, Capcom Japan belted out phenomenal decisions in games, such as this, Resident Evil 7. Though not breaking any new grounds for the horror genre, it did play every note it hit with precision and expertise, filling in the void that PT left while making solid nods to games like Outlast and Amnesia. My only complaint with it is pacing. The first hour and a half of this game is completely bonkers, going all out to mess with you. But then it realised it's played all of its cards and uh, ums and ahs its way through to the last third act, where it picks up and goes balmy again. And yes, this honour extends to Capcom Japan as a whole, with their continued free DLC support on Monster Hunter and the promise that Monster Hunter World will have zero microtransactions. I hope you guys noticed that Resident Evil 7 is just honourable mention number one. We've actually got two this year, and number two is... Honourable mention number two. Cuphead. Besides being beautiful, joyful to play, and infuriating to Kotaku journalists, Cuphead is a testament to doing things the hard way and being better for it. Yes, the game is challenging, but it's certainly not impossible. I'd argue anyone who claims so needs to study the bosses more, look for patterns, or plain old get good. Or, you know, actually play video games instead of complaining about them. That aside, to talk about Cuphead and not mention the hand-drawn animations would simply be a crime. It runs at a beautiful 60 frames per second too, so all of these animations get an extra level of crispness that has never really been seen before. I give massive praise to Studio MDHR, and with the announcement that their second title will retain the same animation style, I eagerly anticipate their future titles. It looks great, it sounds great, it plays great, man, Cuphead was just a phenomenal time. That said, up next is something rather... special. Game of the Year 2017 Runner Up. Sonic Mania. Hey, Sega. You're fired. Seriously, can we just have an all-star team of fans led by Christian Whitehead make new Sonic games forever? Sonic Mania is the kind of love letter that fans of any franchise dream of, crafted from the ground up to bring back Sonic's 16-bit heyday. Everything looks, sounds, and plays phenomenally, with a blend of old and new levels. If you think you've seen Chemical Plant Zone a thousand times, just wait till you see the new gel mechanics design for Mania, or even the boss nod to Mean Bean Machine. It's a wonderful game, and most importantly to me, it's how I recovered from Sonic 06. That's right, this game here is how I got over that mess. In the grand scheme of things too, it did something unthinkable. It gave the Sonic franchise respect again. Well, in, until forces happened. We're at the final stop, and before I reveal it, I just want to say... I don't care. Uh, not to sound like a jerk, but again, it's my list. You don't have to agree with it. I'd actually encourage you to make your own list and share it, so that way we can all see the games that came out this year that we may have missed that we should actually check out. That aside, um, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, goblins and ghouls, I present to you my Game of the Year 2017. Game of the Year 2017. Open your eyes. Open your eyes.
The Wii U was a console that never found its home. It drifted for years, moving from place to place, until finally, this year, it gave us this, its swan song. Breath of the Wild is an incredibly made game. Is it perfect? No. Should you play it? Yes. A large departure from the series, Breath of the Wild lets the overall plot take a back seat, instead focusing on gameplay and world building through exploration and the gameplay. Simply put, it's the best game released this year for many reasons, but chief among many is the ability to make even the most simple moments something to cherish. From shrine puzzles to the divine beasts, Hyrule has never been so vast and teeming with adventure. Yes, I know, this is the safest pick anyone could have made for this award, but sometimes, if the game at hand is getting all these nods, it's getting them for a damn good reason. Dust off your Wii U or grab a Switch, and see for yourself why Breath of the Wild will go down in the Zelda Pantheon as one of its most influential and important games to date. And that's it! Thank you very much to everyone who stuck with us through 2017. I know the content was a bit more sporadic this year, and we're intending to fix that in 2018. Don't you worry, I've not run out of ideas, I'm just getting very, um, perfectionist, is that a good word? I don't know. Uh, once again, thank you to the camera lady, uh, Liz, my wife, for always holding the camera and kind of beating me back into submission where I need to be. Thank you to N, our wonderful staff artist, for all the artwork they've done over the years for the channel. And thank you to you guys for giving me something to smile at every single time I open up the studio app on my phone. Okay, with that, happy holidays, happy Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy Krampus, uh, and good night. <laughs>